You're listening to Staying in the Game, a Plum Dragon Herbs podcast where we have conversations about mindset and techniques for staying at the top of your game. I'm your host, Janelle Leatherwood. Joining us today is Jason Lage, a therapeutic massage, body work, and reflexology practitioner whose goal is to revitalize health and lessen pain and stress for his clients. He is the owner of Tranquil Heart Enterprises and practices in the Minnesota area. Welcome to our podcast, Jason. It's so great to have you here today, and I would love for you to introduce yourself to our listeners today. Hi, everyone. My name is Jason Lage, and I'm a board-certified therapeutic massage and body worker and a reflexologist. And uh, so that's uh, and I have my own business and uh, and uh, live with two beagles and have three children that are all grown up and going to college. One of them, however, is actually not in college. He's uh, he's a special needs individual. He's a genius uh, with autism. Oh, tell me more about that. Okay. Uh, so, so yes, uh, um, his, his diagnosis is pervasive developmental disorder. And uh, what's interesting is he's nonverbal, uh, so he doesn't speak. Uh, however, he is vastly intelligent. And what's interesting is he was born in 1996, and he's kind of the reason that uh, I am here to this day. Not entirely, but, uh, but definitely a huge, huge credit to him. Him, not just for teaching me about humanity, but uh, but uh, but about sensitivities, um, because he is an autistic individual. Uh, they uh, again, for example, his uh, his speech and communication uh, abilities are. are not developed um, it, with his neurological condition, but other aspects uh, have been heightened, and that's what indirectly occurs. So there might be areas or portions of the brain that are developed as somebody even ten or twenty years older than him. Wow! And, and it was it was his sensitivity because he's a regular client of mine, mm-hmm. and believe it or not. We literally have a conversation through body work. It's body language. It's energy and these things. And literally, I can we can fill in each other's sentences as we are connected through this work. That's really fascinating. So tell me, what is yes. body work? Okay. So body work is, and again, so, so, uh, I'll do my best to, to define this again. Um, it is, it is a summary of, uh, the work, which is, uh, corresponding to principles of alignment as well as energy. Okay. So, um, so whereas a, a manual therapy modality would be like effleurage, where you're applying a long stroke, okay? Um, whereas body work deals with uh, the body being, uh, whether it's manipulated or lengthened or even the individual uh, relaxing into a place where his, uh, where he is um, – his his body is in a optimal alignment. Um, so so uh, again so so for example of this talking through the process. Okay, yeah, walk um, me there is a what point I, on the top. Yes, if I walked okay. in and I said, okay, I want to have you do this body work on me. I'd come in, yes. I'd lay down, or what would I do as a client? If you're yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so you would come in, and uh, and and again. So, so what we would do is we would, uh, I would probably begin working on your neck and shoulders and things like that because, uh, again, the ther- the the manual therapies lend themselves to body work because uh, the the muscle and fibrous tissues. Okay, they uh, especially the fascia, the fibrous tissue, the connective tissue. It actually resists. When pressure is applied to it, even even a light pressure, like one ounce of pressure, it has it, it will initially resist that. Okay. Mm-hmm. However, if at if, if pressure held for the right amount of time, 
with the right amount of pressure at the right angle into the into the resistance, if you will, of this fascia, uh, then then it will actually release. Okay, or or it'll allow you, it'll accept you into the tissues, and this is very very important because again, if your tissues are not allowing the structures of your body, and this is how I can summarize what that body work session would be, is think of it like this. The majority of us are, and I'm doing the quotation fingers here, I'm, we're powering through the day, and we perceive as though we are supposed to be holding ourselves up in space by our muscles and connect and our fascia. Mm -hmm. But that is a misconception because the muscles and fascia actually drapes on the on the hard structures, the bones of the body, and it is the ropes and pulleys, this dynamic tension that's created called tensegrity that actually holds us upright and, and in alignment and things. So body work is a way to dissolve the inefficient the excessive and deficient tensions in the body that are either emotional patterns or belief systems that are no longer useful and are actually causing compensation and usage patterns, mm -hmm. okay? Because even though we're quite all different in how we're built, there is an optimal way for which all of our bodies are integrated and how they work together. And body work actually is a way to to get that mm -hmm. uh, so that, uh, yes, yes. Uh, is the technique that you use, is it like a firm pressure or a very light pressure touch? What is it like? Yes, yes. So, so it is that entire range from, from very, very light pressure uh, all the way down to uh, deep, deep. So, so, and, and again, so, so let's take one step back because this is uh, this is this conversation is kind of heading in a direction that defines what massage therapy is today, and that is useful for our conversation because the business that I created, Tranquil Heart Enterprise, it, I'm, I, I find myself different from other corporate massage venues mm -hmm. in that um, I don't run a protocol. I actually listen to a person's body and then I work on them. <laughs> I do. Uh, so I address what their body tells me to do. But uh, but to take one step back to, to address the, the modalities, okay? The periosteum is our fibrous tissue that surrounds the surface of our bones. So that is our fascial layer covering all the bones of our body's surface, okay? So when I do deep tissue work or I'm working deeply in the body, I'm working all the way to the periosteum, but no further mm -hmm. because it doesn't get any deeper than that. Right. Okay. But from a fascial perspective, because again, you can imagine that. So imagine this, and this will be, this will be, uh, this will be interesting for you. I think to wrap your mind around in that. Uh, so, so, so again, subconsciously, um, we, we, uh, our brain will resist a movement because it is, it feels it's protecting itself. It's a protective mechanism. So, so in other words, if the shoulder, uh, even you know, it, it, uh, if it's supposed to just drop down and correspond with what gravity is, it won't necessarily do that. Say, if there is impingement on a nerve or something like that's that's a bad example because obviously you wouldn't want to impinge the nerve further. But in the example, like uh, like our clavicle or underneath the arm into the axilla where we have those lymphatic nodes, those portals for drainage of the cellular byproduct in our body. We want that open so that, that those blockages can drain and, and, and that thing can, uh, all of that, all of that, uh, uh, that gunk can be then excreted from the body. Um, so, so, uh, so again, we would want to um, open up and expand that, and and do so uh, gently, where we're actually um, where we're not resisting, we're not pushing or pulling, but rather we are a quality in traditional Chinese medicine called song, S U N G, which you can think of as how do you bake a pizza? Mm -hmm. You don't overcook it and you don't undercook it. It's just right. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it a step further. And here's a question for you, uh, even though it's rhetorical here. So how is it that we discover the excessive tensions or tensions existing in our body that we're not even aware we're holding on to? Mm. Yes, the answer is stillness. 
Uh, it is actually listening to that internal environment as well as that external environment. And then, uh, and, and again, it's softening and sinking. Think of energy like uh, seven up bubbles on top of that soda, settling down on top of the soda. You can't force those bubbles to sink any faster. They have to sink just like the silt settling to the bottom of the river. Mm -hmm. And that is precisely what Lao Tzu meant in the Tao Te Ching when he said, let it be still and gradually it becomes clear. Okay. That's really interesting. So how yes. how do you um, figure out what's happening in that internal environment as well? Yes, um, it's because I have developed a sensitivity to the to the energy. Mm -hmm. In fact, I can literally touch the surface of the skin, and I can feel that slight oscillation. Um, so, so it is so a, a very sensitive uh, sensitive a developed sensitivity to energy as well as to tension and uh, i can i can feel uh when uh, there there is that uh that blockage occurring or if there's uh, some stuckness there mm -hmm. um it's it's as if uh my 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 attention to my intention will literally just uh um yeah it, it, it i i i just um i feel it wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's through listening. Think of, uh, well, that's, that's an interesting difference. I think you'll find this interesting. Power is sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And with great power comes great responsibility, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a yes. gift that you have, really. <laughs> ah, so no, no. It's a gift that you have as well. Mm -hmm. I simply have had a very fortunate experience to have some mentors that I trusted and who unconditionally loved me. And so I listened to what they said and I practiced, 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 mm -hmm. uh, as well as, like I said, uh, I would say the majority of individuals would be like, Oh, you had a special needs son. How is that? How is that a, a blessing? But believe me, it absolutely is. It absolutely is in every way. And that's, that's a, that's very uh, interesting as well. Oh, I believe that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, tell me, how does your son communicate back to you then? Uh, so, so again, so uh, he would, he, he does have uh, vocalizations. Um, so it, it would be like vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, and U expressed as a vocalization. So let's say that I am working, let's, let's take reflexology, which is one of the, reflexology is not body work, okay? I'm going to take one second here to define what reflexology is, and that is that it's based on zone therapy, uh, which was uh, created by Dr. Fitzgerald, okay? And uh, zone therapy is a uh, uh, there are nerve pathways running vertically throughout the body, five on the left and five on the right. Um, and zone one starting in the insides of our feet, like our big toes running all the way up to the top of our head and then working outward laterally. OK, mm -hmm. so what he had discovered now, he was an ear, nose, Dr. Pizzo was an ear, nose and throat doctor. And he had discovered that by applying constant pressure to a reflex, it had an anesthetic effect throughout the entire nerve pathway. And so he was actually doing surgeries just by applying constant pressure to the reflex. He had a physiotherapist named Eunice Ingham, and, who, and she basically was who had disseminated reflexology. She created a medical protocol of working systematically in a very specific way these reflexes on the body to affect the entire body, all the glands and uh, quadrants, all the organs of the body, just by applying a systematic pressure with a, a technique applied with the hands to the bottoms of the hands and feet. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm working, say, for example, uh, I'll, I'll pick up my son here who had a, uh, he has a, uh, he had, uh, through usage, again, we're talking about an individual who can get himself really wound up quite well, but he doesn't know how to unwind himself, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm meaning something very specifically, obviously, by unwinding, because, again, we're talking about that, those, these, these, uh, these holding patterns with our body, whether they're sociological or there's pain that occurred once, Perhaps there was even acute pain. Maybe there was a laceration. But then after that, it became associated where he was just um, holding on and protecting that particular area. And that is what led to the dysfunctional movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, what that manifests as, 
uh, in the reflex is like a congestion. Okay, it's a tenderness is what he feels. So when I'm working through this denoted congestion, he'll look at me and he'll be like, and, and we'll both will just be looking at each other and be like, whoa, uh, we, we have words like uchi mm-hmm. and, and things like that. I've discovered an uchi here on your foot. Uh, Mr. Dillon, and so on and so forth. So, so, so again, we have an interesting conversation with regards to working through and negotiating the um, the the, uh, the the disbursement of this uh, of this tension, right? And 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 uh, congestion. Wow, that's yes. really fascinating. Thank you, thank you. So I, I agree. <laughs> so now. <laughs> If you want to apply the same principles of um, the body work to daily living, are there any, is there anything that you can glean from the work that you do to help people who maybe aren't going to go in for body work They they don't even do massage regularly, but what are, what are some like practices that they could do at home? Like, is it, can they incorporate meditation or stretching or self-massage what i don't know do you have any ideas there yes this is an excellent question um absolutely it's it's a so so uh meditation as a as an extraordinary um pathway to healing okay because you're turning your attention uh inward to listen to your body and integrate with your mind so that you are experiencing yourself mm-hmm. in, in meditation and mindfulness curriculum. A working definition is coming to terms with things as they are. So just like you said, a self-care technique, whether it's yoga or uh, in myself, Tai Chi has been instrumental in because here's the thing and this is what i i I missed we were just uh on the on on the line here with josh walker who's a martial artist and things like that and he and he had asked me a couple of questions in regards to this and uh there's there is a world of difference between external and internal martial arts external being like uh like uh kung fu um uh, uh pick pick any style of external uh, Kung Fu or Shotokan Karate, um, and, or the internal being Tai Chi and Zing Yi and Bagua. Okay, mm-hmm. um, but the so so the external you're uh, training the external forces, uh, your the sinews of your hand and the, all of that. Whereas the internal martial arts, you're you're cultivating your chi, mm-hmm. and instead of external force, you're actually internal energy and cultivation and you can't so so tension for internal even though let's even when we're standing here okay or sitting in our chairs there's still a dynamic level of tension because they are contractile tissues these muscles however again it's like we were talking about tai chi will teach you how to balance those tissues and that meditation can lead you to be calibrating that 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 tension so so for example if you if you think about like right now if you turn your attention to your legs you might be over tensing tensing your legs right now and it is your mind that you will actually be uh we've found the wheelhouse now who's steering the ship Okay, and that could be even just a very basic um, self-care method for individuals within themselves to say, wow, you know, I'm really holding on here. Yeah. And now is now is where I this is where I like to throw a Zen proverb, and that is let go or be dragged. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love that. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. And here's another one for everyone that would wish to embark on this path. Another Zen proverb is if you're facing in the right direction, all you have to do is keep walking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. you. It's not, it's not mine. (laughs) (laughs) So this meditation and these practices, do they help the person get unstuck with like whatever energy has, 
harmed them or stayed with them, like negative energy that has has yes said. precisely yes I, we're on the same page and this was actually my answer for josh i was getting to this point we were talking about how tai chi being a very philosophical art how have i used the principles of it to influence my practice and and again so so these anything that i say here will be a reflection of what i've learned from my mentors and teachers all of this is just you know this is a reflection on them um and, and so differentiation as an example here, differentiation is a term even in physical therapy that we use to describe uh, uh, something called sensory motor amnesia. And uh, again, what this would be, uh, these are those um, those holding usage, protective patterns, the negative energy mm-hmm. that, that we're holding in our body where we're holding on to these things. And mind-body disciplines in martial arts, in all of the external and the internal, because at the end of the day, and this is what I was talking with Josh about, whether it's jiu-jitsu, mixed martial arts, or tai chi chuan, okay? I know tai chi gets the reputation of being, you know, a a slow-moving, healthful, you know, and things like that. But back in the day, uh, you know, those martial artists had to use it to survive, and, and, and so we, we don't, uh, oftentimes it'll take an individual, you know, decades and decades and decades to develop a skill with the principles of Tai Chi. And so therefore it's really discredited as opposed to just learning some, uh, some technique to kick someone in the groin, for example. Yeah. Um, so, so, but this, but all of these, the principles remain the same. So we could say that all martial arts are the same, even though, the principles are what we're referring to because, again, the principles of alignment in bodywork disciplines such as the Alexander Technique are the same as the principles in Tai Chi as they are in Praying Mantis Kung Fu. So, so all of these principles remain the same, and it is precisely through the uh, – through through that body knowledge, which is a process again, so you would be you would be dissolving the encumbered attachments mm-hmm. that we are withholding in order to liberate ourselves and actually get back to what we knew prior to about six or seven years old, because it's right around that six or seven years old, where again, um, I, I heard a, a gentleman, a podcast, he described it beautifully. He was calling, we're all, we're all unique. And, and he referred to this as our weirdness. And it is our weirdness that we celebrate when we're young like that around six or seven. And then somebody says, Hey, quit being weird. And really you're just acting your own, you're just being yourself. And you're like, Oh, well, I'm not going to be weird anymore. I better, I better disconnect myself from myself. And then you go on, of course, to seek approval. And how do you get that? Well, you start behaving like somebody else. So now you're behaving like somebody else, loathing yourself and disconnecting yourself from yourself. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is, again, so the beginning usually in these uh, dysfunctional or sociologic, maybe you saw uh, Uncle Bob or something moving in a certain way, you know what I mean? And and, and these things then manifest because you have to remember uh, in traditional Chinese medicine or, you know, in traditional Chinese medicine or when we talk about qi, you will develop the expression of your chi, and and by that I mean genes, okay? So we will develop the genes based on these lifestyle choices, which kind of defines what holistic healthcare is, is all of the issues stem from the root, which is that lifestyle soul. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So helping people understand the root cause of their problem. Um, what are some like daily practices or regimens that you recommend to your clients or patients on a regular basis other than getting body work done? Mm, yes. Okay. So uh, that would be to sweat every day. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's yes. great. Um, <laughs> and, and what, yes, exactly. Precisely. It, what I mean by that is obviously 
exercise is a key component in wellness, okay? But that gets a bit, even even uh, what I notice right now, what's kind of trending and what a, what a lot of individuals are saying with the future of healthcare is, is uh, exercise and uh, exercise fitness and healthcare, this kind of unified thing. And I feel like they're missing the boat because a lot of the clients, you know, a lot of my clients come to me after having been subjected to those processes, even working with a personal trainer. Because what happens when you take a tension that you're not already aware that you're holding on to that's in an excessive point and then adding additional tension to it? It causes <laughs> okay. injury, I'm guessing. Precise, precisely, precisely. Not no bueno. Um, mm-hmm. um, and, and so, uh, and so again, so sweating though does not necessarily. There's other ways, even far infrared sauna. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's, there's uh, for yoga as as a wonderful. And again, when I say yoga, that that may and people may perceive that like that is not inherently dangerous. It all is, and everything has limitations. That's another thing I mentioned to Josh, is that everything has limitations. I'm going to go so far, even psychotherapy, okay, even therapeutic massage and body work and reflexology. The solution, and this is Jack Cornfield, these aren't my words, the solution is consciousness, okay, Mm -hmm. and a deeply therapeutic relationship with another individual. So, So again, so in those moments, if I make that connection and I am that person that is making progress, which can be even one half of one percent, okay, then uh, then I may uh, persuade an individual to sweat every day. Another one, okay, is counting calories. Everyone says, "Ugh, counting calories." Again, here's here's the difference between Tai Chi philosophy and the philosophy of contemporary society. Is we want to drive through the build, drive around the building with the golden arches and get our health care handed to us in <laughs> two minutes at the window. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way. So, so just as the example, counting the calories is is uh, is finding out what that. Um, what that calorie amount is for each individual. And then, you know, if somebody wanted to be losing weight, for example, we are in an obese society and there's just all these misperceptions, a lot of foods that, uh, that, that don't even make you feel full and these kinds of things. And all of this people are not even aware of, um, there, there, there might be being misled by marketing and these kinds of things. Um, so, so if they wanted to lose weight, they could just take that, uh, that level, that, that number of calories and consume two or 300 less, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and no matter what, they're going to lose weight. It's going to happen. Yes. So another thing is H2O. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very simple. You're not sick. You're thirsty. Mm. (laughs) Okay. Chronic dehydration. Many of the issues that deal with chronic pain, things like that, are just because we're all walking around chronically dehydrated. Everyone's body weight divided in half as the minimum amount of simply water that everyone should be drinking. If they want to save their health insurance policy Mm -hmm. (laughs) down the road, just drink the minimum amount of water. You know what I mean? That in and of itself, again, with the weight loss, all of these things, the energy in the body, all these things will start coming full circle and and, and, and it becomes, this is great. The misconception is, it, here, here's the truth, Janelle, is that it does feel great to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> it does. And the, the last thing I would, I would just mention is... Um, it's so very important to assume um, to be to to be better or just to be okay. Um, it's never too late. It's never you know. And and when we assume something, uh, it is is uh, neuroplasticity. Uh, so so we assume something. It's just like saying I'm going to get better about this, and and you say that to yourself. Every day, you assume that that is going to happen, and it will eventually solidify in your consciousness. Absolutely. It works. So that's the growth mindset right there versus a fixed mindset. Precisely. In order to grow, you have to cross a boundary of limitation as a visual there. Mm-hmm. So is that, would you say that's your mindset right there, or do you have, do you describe your mindset in any other way? 
Well, I mentioned there's no downside to thinking positively. Mm-hmm. And the moment is all that we truly can affect. We've, we've, we've also discussed that. And life, and, and, and that's a Tai Chi or body work and massage. People think, well, it's about maintenance. And yes, they are right. It is about each and every day we are maintaining this because here's another Tai Chi concept for you, Janelle, is that it's not a light switch. We don't say, oh, I'm in Tai Chi mode now. No, no, no. This is always 24-7, endlessly, the form of the formless Mm. and embodying this integration, okay? And so, but the point of life is not maintenance. There's, There's a lovely quote, and I love this, and it says, a ship is always safe in the harbor. Mm -hmm. But ships aren't meant to stay in port you see and so that's the point is the life is adventure it is about throttling those rpms okay getting those rpms at a higher velocity that's what life really is but it is precisely that maintenance and consistency that puts you that positions you luck being when opportunity meets preparation where you can then live your life fully yeah so as you just to kind of summarize what you're saying there's no downside like you said to thinking positively and we shouldn't look at life as we're just trying to maintain it it's a whole life philosophy and we're going to try and integrate it into all areas of our life and really see change happen so you you are absolutely right it is mindfulness so so every moment of every day we can live with awareness is what i'm trying to say and that really is what tai chi is is being aware of that internal world and what it is communicating to you simultaneously with the external world. So the yin and yang, and they are not opposites. And, and I, did you notice I, I, I cut myself there too? I did it again as uh, uh, um, I, I said yin and yang, and because I, I'm I'm an American, and 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 I assure you. It is not yin and yang. It is yin yang. Mm. They, uh-huh. they are complementative. They are complementative, and, and and there's a bit of each and each other. They are not, but that is something that we like to do over here in the West. Is we like to divisionalize. We like to partition things, just like I said. We like to uh, we like to deduce things to their fundamental parts, but it's not that way in life Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yes yes looking we have to look at the whole picture (laughs) amen yes yeah yes so the 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 little and the big picture simultaneously you see it there that's that's an excellent so the little so the details only in so much as they would affect that bigger picture that you're referring to please okay that's a good correction yeah i like that because we have to look in the details and at, at the big picture is what you're saying. Can I? Yes. Can I? Can I add? Can I? Can I add something else too here? Absolutely. You would just add. And I, I'm looking over my notes here. My experience, because you were asking me about my accumulative experience, what I have learned, and this, I, this is my opinion. Okay, but as somebody who has worked for a while. Uh, years and years and years in this uh, in this work uh, and and dealing with energy chi if you will okay um, that the source what what I've come to understand is the source of this chi is either benevolent or we could say holy um, and that is because chi doesn't like to be slaved. It doesn't like to be restrained. My sensei put it to me wonderfully a couple of weeks ago. If we think of a fishing wheel as uh, because we don't hold that energy like we're energy hoarders. Some people are email hoarders. I heard that. <laughs> but uh, we, we, don't, we don't try to hold that energy in because energy can stagnate. This is, that's what they mean by yi dao chi dao in traditional Chinese medicine, where the mind goes, the energy goes, where the energy goes, the blood follows. And we don't want these things to stagnate. Think of that fishing wheel. So we can let it go. We can send it back into the universe. There will be 
a supply of energy coming back through those those channels. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, one, one additional thing is uh, change is not painful. It is our resistance to change that is painful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that ties in with everything we just talked about. <laughs> and then um, uh, this one is Dr. Yang Zhuang Ming. And I, I love what he had said when he said, the taller the bamboo tree grows, the deeper it bows. Mm-hmm. And I just feel as though... The, again, our higher centers of, of, of as human beings, you know, it, it, it is it is a higher center when we choose to slay our ego. Yeah. Okay. However, and again, here's an opinionated American coming straight at you saying, "Let's let's do this." <laughs> You know, let's slay that ego. Yeah. You know, yes. It does take <laughs> a lot of humility, I feel like, to to see change happen because you have to admit to yourself that there are things that you can improve on. There are things that are good just the way you are, but there's things that you can work on. And, and, and if you don't mind, um, I wanted to talk to you about some of the changes that you've seen with your patients. I have a couple of not so fun examples that I'd like to chat about, and uh, and and again, it's uh, so. So the first one, though, and and this is where Plum Dragon Herbs has helped my clients tremendously. So uh, uh, this is an excellent opportunity to tie them in. This weaning them from naproxen, even myself as a manual therapist. Okay, so the attrition on my joints is tremendous. It's unavoidable, even with absolutely astute body mechanics, okay? So, so yes, so taking inflammation out. I was taking uh, ibuprofen, this is years and years ago, and I was taking that to kind of to, to take the edge off of the uh, some of the attrition that was occurring with uh, my tendons and my joints and things like that. And then I said to myself, you know, I'm just going to, quit this right now because I'm not really doing nothing. It's, it's, it's just holding it kind of the same. And I just want to find out what was interesting was that it was like 72 hours or so, a little bit later. And I started discovering that the pain that I was feeling was not even the pain at all. Hmm. So that stuff, yes, precisely. So it was completely distorting my perception of even what was truthfully going on. Okay. Then Okay, so now I'm, I'm, I have a client here who chronic, you know, who takes naproxen every day because we have autoimmune disorders, and there's so obviously that causes just things neurologically and stress, and these things lead, you know, the manifestations of tensions in the neck and the cervicals and shoulders, and at like uh, the short short tendon of our bicep, so just just above our our elbow. Uh, so many of us are holding that at right angles just because of these postural, these, um, these daily usage. And, and so then that during the inflammatory process, okay, the fascia comes through, which is three-dimensional and continuous. It lays itself down in a spider web. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it does so haphazardly because it attaches to this gland and this tendon over here. And that's what we call to as adhesion. Things are sticking together as opposed to flowing freely of one another which would allow blood flow and chi okay. and all these things right yes yes so now we have a perfect storm for congestion blah 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 let's get back to the jowl here so it was though i had phased in some herbal ice liniment mm-hmm. and uh, this was an herbal form of ice because ice is very effective and it feels nice okay however eventually if you consistently use ice it will stagnate that chi, okay, and so then again, now now what you're doing is you're trapping that chi within those meridians, and you're not progressing that condition. You need to get that chi flu- flowing, and that herbal ice as an herbal equivalent to ice to remove that inflammation from the tissues. It was actually relief in an herbal form, yeah, and that was absolutely fantastic, especially when we consider it as a segue, a catalyst to removing somebody from over-the-counter pharmaceutical mm-hmm. anti-inflammatories. Extraordinary. Because those those naproxen, that'll destroy your kidneys. Yeah. Right? And I know that 
old statement, but this stuff isn't good. That, yeah, okay. that's incredible. I really like herbal yes. ice. That's one that yes. I like to yes. keep with me in my backpack and take it when my kids and I are hiking. It's Yeah, it's really great because... And you can't keep ice around anyways. And as like one of our blog posts um, is titled, ice is not so nice. (laughs) As you said, it can lead to stagnation and it doesn't help the healing process. It just feels good. And that's why we do it. And cool to hear that you're you're hiking with your kids. That's awesome to hear that you're all out getting active and things. I guess it'll be ski season now. (laughs) But, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. So let me jump over here to another client case here. So now, now we're going to talk about an 80-year-old uh, uh, male, okay, a Thoreau scholar, Henry David Thoreau scholar. Uh, anyways, uh, yes, uh, so uh, not that that's pertinent, but just, just this is a vastly intelligent person who, um, who has been a part of the mainstream stream medical establishment for 80 years. So... You know, it's not his first rodeo, yeah. so to speak. Uh, and, and he was referred to me by a regenerative orthopedic physician who had, who had, who was aware of, of what it was that, you know, my work and things like that. But because of the encroachment and all these different medical specialties that ping pong individuals around before they will make a referral to somebody like myself after they can't help them or, or, or that they just want to send them back out, mm-hmm. you know, um, Yes. Okay. So again, this, this individual was diagnosed with dystonia, which is a spasm in his neck muscle. It's similar to Parkinson's, but it's not Parkinson's. Okay. So it's, it's a, this, this chronic neck spasm that's occurring. Okay. Well, he goes to a medical specialist, and what did they what did they do? Well, for for your dystonia, let's give you muscle relaxers. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So he went home. He took one muscle relaxer. He fell out of bed and broke his foot. <sighs> So now how does this digress the process is my question, and that's completely rhetorical. Mm -hmm. But the fact remains that the stress and the frustration and the tension that was surmounting coupled with anxiety, and where there's anxiety, usually there's depression and things like that, which is all a side of my, you know what I mean? But therapeutic massage and body work and reflexology is very beneficial for this because, again, what we can do is help facilitate that parasympathetic response, just that rest and digest where you can actually feel warm and cozy and pump the brakes and just allow that heaviness and softness and sinking to occur to gain some clarity and resolve for your attention and your intention and the expectations and the belief, okay? So, it's all these things. Anyways, within a couple of sessions, again, I, I, what, I believe their testimonial when they first did come to me was they weren't even sure, sure whether they were going to make it wow. in a couple of weeks. Right. And in a few sessions with me, and again, applying combinations of ancestors and whole family did dodge out to that neck area in order to heat things up, have that analgesic effect, and then cool things off with that herbal liniment. Again, we're on the mend. We're doing awesome. Oh, that is we're, great. There, Yes, yes. That's great. Well, I'm excited that you've seen those results with Plum Dragon's herbal analgesics. Um, and d Jot Jow is the term that has been used for ages and particularly in martial arts. So uh, we're talking about uh, herbs that have been soaked in an alcohol base and have been soaking for many months and becoming potent and they contain these bioactive compounds that when you apply them topically to the skin will enter the skin tissues and into the cellular level even and can do amazing things like promote healing and also help take away pain but not just the symptoms of pain but get to the root cause of it and um, so as I'm talking about herbs um, I'm just wondering at what point in your studies did you get introduced to herbs and how did how um, how did that the role of Chinese herbal medicine um, infiltrate <laughs> into your practice yes Oh, how appropriately placed, because that's precisely what the Dajiao does, is it 
penetrates deeply into the tissues. So for myself, again, I had forgotten about Dit Dajjal. The first time I was ever exposed to that, of course, was uh, growing up and watching The Karate Kid when, you know, when Daniel San had that on his bruise and then Mr. Miyagi made that herbal compress, you know what I mean, to take the bruising out of that kicking injury. Mm -hmm. And it had wonderful effects to that bruising tissue. So that was, that of course was in my mind. And then of course, the term came about uh, over my martial arts, just over the, you know, especially with regards to uh, uh, full contact martial arts and things like that. I mean, I've seen some, I've seen some, some contusions <laughs> that were downright traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, and, and, and so, but I forgot completely about that because again, as a, as a massage therapist, I use essential oil. These, uh, these hydrocarbons, you know, the, these uh, like frankincense, for example, adding oxygen to the bloodstream, just like, just like think of our chi and energy as the amount of oxygen in our blood. Okay, so so essential oils, all this is quite great. And I was treating superficially with with winter green and um, let's see here. Oh, just just other essential oils. Okay, they are still just like biofreeze. Now they will penetrate deep into your tissues, but it's just like biofreeze or cryoderm. Okay, hot or cold, it's simply superficially giving you relief. Whereas the Ditta Jiao is going to penetrate deeply into those tissues and take that inflammation out. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's the difference. So like I said, I was literally in what I, I mean, just a chronic, chronic inflammatory process with my right wrist. And it was a combination of taking wise mender with gecko tonic as well as uh, ancestors um, did that jowl from plum dragon and their herbal ice that completely 100 percent recovery from what would have led some individuals to even get out of the industry. Um, I, I, of course, again, that was uh, I, I knew I knew that there was a way out of that process. Um, however, it was um I didn't know what. And so that was, so I started doing inquiry and I was like, hey, I forgot about Dit Jiao, researched it, tried a couple of brands. And, and because of the classy site that Lisa Ball created and that you folks have created that seduced me to wish to trust you. Okay. And you did not let me down. Oh, good. So <laughs> the, the testament to the quality. Well, like I said, we wouldn't be having this conversation if your guys' product did not speak for you. Mm -hmm. But after all, biofreeze, topical ibuprofen, okay? Because you can get, they, they, you can, you, uh, an individual can go to their physician. There are topical ibuprofens, and I do also advocate that people talk to their physicians about this because they don't necessarily have to be ingesting these ibuprofen if that's what they're getting relief from. Right. They can get a prescription for something else, but you know whether they're paying on a pocket for it and things like that, they should definitely consider Plum Dragon Herbs and Ditta Jiao because now we are talking about still a natural herbs, nature intervening here, mm -hmm. interrupting that cycle of dysfunction or, or, or the healing cycle. Inflammation is part of healing. But if you are chronically inflamed, then that is, again, uh, that, that, is, that is the cycle for which then needs to be interrupted. Yeah. And how do you go about determining which Dida Jiao to use on a client? Like, for example, I have a lot of tension in my upper back and, you know, just knots and tension, like yes. I said. And so do you have to go through like an analysis of the person and what's causing that root um, problem? Yes. And yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone, the, the specificity is absolutely mission critical. Um, I, we, we all have different, um, different states status of our conditions okay but generally speaking um and, and again what I, I was actually on plum dragon's website today and the uh, how lisa has elaborated and, and your team elaborated on the various types of injuries and how the ditta jiao is very specific as to what it is addressing is on a whole nother level of my area of expertise with regards to the product. I use, 
well, actually four of your products that that's that's uh, I would say cover cover um, the needs of the range of uh, dysfunction and issues that my my clients have. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, and that is bruised bruised juice for acute okay contusions. Okay, mm-hmm. and then uh, the herbal ice as as a ice equivalent in a herbal form. Okay. And then the ancestors jow as the powerful, uh, in my opinion, um, one of your guys' most potent products, I would be intrigued about whether, uh, uh, Lisa or somebody else, uh, introduces me to a more powerful, um, formula than what you offer then ancestors. I believe it's the most potent okay and then whole family just seems to work as well and again for uh chronic um uh, uh conditioning um uh, of, uh, uh, of of my so i use whole and, and ancestors regularly uh just to be able to um work on myself mm-hmm. and uh and again reading on your guys website how that conditions those tissues and sinews and and uh and and skin and so on and so forth to hold up to the rigors of even uh iron shirt and iron palm training yeah absolutely yeah that's yeah. true i mean because it can help with any person's pain management, but like you said, it holds up to the rigors of the intense sparring and uh, physical contact that martial artists um, engage in on a regular basis. Yeah, in Shaolin, you know, I mean, I have I, I, I've literally seen footage of Shaolin where I mean they're punching sand, okay, <laughs> <laughs> bare fist. So, so for real, for real. For real, for real, Iron Shirt. They're breaking spears off in their throat. <laughs> okay, spear tips off. Again, so so these herbal formulas have existed for thousands of years. You know, and they are, they, they're, they're, uh, here's a wonderful quote to bring it back to quotes is, if something is true, it lasts forever. And there's a reason that the Dutch has been around because it has been refined over the centuries to do precisely what, um, what we needed to do. Yeah, that's so true. I love that. And I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to speak with you today. And how can listeners get in touch with you if they want to follow up with you or have additional questions? So my website is www.tranquilheartenterprise.com. Dot com And those words are spelled out. And so anyone can find my contact information, my address, a contact form. And I would just love to hear from everyone um, regards to all things that we discussed and any inquiry that they have in regards to um, what, what it is that uh, perhaps I may be able to assist them. Yeah. With. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And we, what we'll do is we'll put that link on our show notes so that people can find you from our page as well. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. So thank you again for joining us. And we hope that our listeners will join us for another podcast coming up soon. Thank you. Yes. Joyful honor. Bye. And thanks to all our listeners for joining us today. Be sure to visit us at plumdragonherbs.com. And if you like the show, be sure to leave a comment on our YouTube channel. Until next time.